First of all, where are we standing right now? On top of the USS Batfish. Got it. The submarine killing champion of World War II. That's now, a, come on. A, that's the is that, a ver is that a verifiable fact? It actually is. How did it earn this moniker? Destroying three Japanese submarines in 76 hours. What year? 1945 is when this happened. When did this get here? 1972. How many of these subs exist? Do you know? Of this model on display, we're looking around eight to nine. Can we can we take a little Let's go. walk around? Let's take a little gander. So this is the the Cunning Tower. You got your anti-aircraft right there. Got it. You got a 20 millimeter right there. Sure. So we're gonna go in. Yeah. Why not? We're inside the meat of a hot dog, a 17 foot diameter tube. We're surrounded by a bun. To sink, we fill up our bun with water. To surface, we use air to push the bun water out, and we surface. Christmas tree here. This yep. tells you if your hatches, your ports, floods are open. So if you go to dive and it's a red, you're dead. If it's green, you're good. And so this is basically allowing water inside of the tank so we can actually submerge the submarine. When you fire a torpedo that weighs 3,000 pounds, you have to compensate with 3,000 pounds of water. You're always trying to get neutral buoyancy. And then we have a ballast tank's man who is actually blowing pressure inside the submarine so we can see if there's any air leaking. The whole point I'm illustrating is that every day in a submarine, no matter if there's an enemy around or not, could be your last day. Could be the last one. How many uh, crewmen? 88 at its max capacity. That includes the officers or? That includes the officer, yes. Refrigerator, cold store. You have a freezer down there as well. Shrimp, steak, pineapple, lobster. Mm -hmm. Most of your cooks were African-Americans. So during a time when World War II was completely segregated. Right. You can't segregate anyone aboard a submarine. So this guy, when it wasn't his time to cook and when they were doing dive operations, he had to shut down what's called the main induction line, basically brings air to everybody. If you don't shut that down and you dive, you're gonna die. There isn't like an, oh, maybe. No, you're gonna die. That's how it is. So he was just as responsible for everyone else's life as anybody else. So there was a chief on board that wasn't very kind. He fell off one time. Who saved him? Yeah. yeah. Don't be that way. Right. Love everybody. There's the, there's the lesson. We've been all on bad camping trips. We've certainly been in, you know, sleepovers and slumber parties and various other, but how difficult would it be to even imagine what sleeping in a room like this would be? This is part of that brotherhood. When you, when you sleep in this room, there's 36 beds in here and you do what they call hot bunking. So three guys are assigned to every two cots. So you're constantly rotating. They work for four hours, they're off for eight hours. That eight hours though is sleeping, learning, wrecking, eating. There's not enough time. They, they figured out during the Vietnam War that submariners actually sleep deprived. We're giving you a taste of what the life is like. We can never give you what the life is like. And you don't want to know what the and life is like. You don't want to know. Yeah. But if I can give you 10% of the experience of a submariner during World War II, I've done my job. <laughs>